This screencast is to help prepare you for Module 3 Mid-Module Assessment. It's based upon the Module 3 Mid-Module Review problem set that I created. If you haven't done it yet, uh, I'll provide a link uh, wherever I post this uh, screencast. And I recommend that if you have not done that, stop this video, download the PDF file, and give it a shot. Once you're done, you, you can check your work by going uh, back to this video and uh, see how you did. Again, these problems will do, uh, go far in terms of preparing you for your mid-module assessment. The problems are parallel. The numbers are different. The first problem here is Roberto made three batches of maple syrup. The first batch was three quarters of a gallon of maple syrup. The next two batches were one third a gallon each. How much syrup did he make? Draw a diagram to support your answer. Well, this is pretty simple because we start with three quarters of a gallon and then we're going to put together two more batches, two batches of one third of a gallon each. Let's create a tape diagram. We're going to partition this tape diagram into three parts. Three fourths represents his first batch. One third represents his second, and one third represents the third. Okay, and now we have to create a bracket and a question mark. And that's our whole. Now we need to find the sum of those numbers. So let's write an expression. So I have three fourths plus one third plus one third. I notice that two of my fractions have a common denominator, so it's going to be best to work or simplify that portion of the problem first. So now we have three fourths plus two thirds. Now there's a number of strategies for finding like denominators. What we have to do is find our common denominator, and whatever procedure we use, we can find that the common denominator is 12. 3 fourths is 9 twelfths, 2 thirds is 8 twelfths. The sum of 9 twelfths at 8 twelfths is 17 twelfths. Uh, we can leave the answer in that form. It might actually be easier to leave it that way. I'm going to simplify it anyway because uh, 17 twelfths equals 12 twelfths plus 5 twelfths equals 1 and 5 twelfths. Now we have the choice of working with 17 twelfths or 1 and 5 twelfths for our next problem. Let's take a look at it and see which is going to work best for us. Okay, uh, let's read this problem. We're going to use information from the previous problem to solve this. Using the syrup he collected, Roberto did some cooking. When he was done, he had two-thirds gallon. How much syrup did he use? Explain your answer using a diagram, numbers, and words. Let's start with our diagram. We know that he originally had 1 and 5 twelfths. We could also uh, express that as 17 twelfths. All right, when he was done, he had 2 thirds. We don't know how much he used. Looking at this tape diagram, it tells us that we need to subtract. Now, we could use any number of approaches here. We could use method 1 or method 2. I'm going to start with method 1. So I'm going to draw my rectangular models. I have one hole, and I'm going to leave it that way. And my second hole, I'm going to partition into 12 equal parts. Let's see if I can get this straight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, eleven vertical lines partitions it into twelve equal parts. I'm going to now bracket it into one and five twelfths. Let's just count this to make sure I have this right. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, that's correct. Now I'm going to subtract my two-thirds from my whole. So I'm going to partition my whole into three equal parts. 
cross out the 2. What do we have left? Well, in this portion we have 1 third, so I'm going to start my expression with 1 third. And the other part of the expression is going to be what we have left over here in the second rectangle, and that's 5 twelfths. Now, I could partition both of these to find my common unit, but I, I'd like to offer some other strategies here. Uh, we could change thirds to twelfths quite easily. Either way, think about that. I will partition it, just in case people don't understand how to do that yet. Many kids in my class do. So we're going to partition this into one, two, three, four. 10, 11, okay, and that would, now my, my one-third becomes 1236 if I counted those up, and my five-twelfths becomes 1536. Find the sum of those, I get 7, 27, excuse me, 27. 36. I can simplify that fraction. Uh, whether it's simplified or not, it's correct, but we could also look at this and see that both the numerator and the denominator are divisible by 3. In fact, they're both divisible by 9. 27 divided by 9 is 3, and 36 divided by 9 is 4. So the answer is 3 fourths. Now if we prefer to do it the other way, I'm going to solve that as well. So we have our 17 twelfths, and I'm subtracting 2 thirds. I don't have room to make the diagram here, but my common unit would be 36. So without using the diagram, I'm going to determine that we have 36 as our common unit. We know that because we can multiply the two denominators. If I turn 17 twelfths to 36, I get 51 36. And here I get 24 36. I subtract 51 minus 24, and I get 27 36. And we know from working previously that that works out to 3 fourths. Okay, we got you through the first half, and now we'll go on to the second half. With the remaining two-thirds gallon of syrup, he used one-fourth of a gallon, making maple sugar, and one-sixth of a gallon for pancakes. How much syrup did he have left? Well, again, we can uh, visualize the hole using our tape diagram, and the hole in this case is two-thirds. And he's going to use some of that up, so he's taking it away. So we need to subtract it. So we're going to uh, put the one-fourth for the maple sugar, the one-sixth for the pancakes, and the rest, what's left, is the question mark. Okay, there's a number of ways we could do that. I could find the sum of one-fourth and one-sixth and subtract it from two-thirds. I could also subtract 2 thirds minus 1 fourth minus 1 sixth. So I'm just going to represent the two ways of looking at this. So we could have 2 thirds minus 1 fourth minus 1 sixth, and we'd go from left to right. Or I could have 2 thirds minus the sum of 1 fourth and 1 sixth. Both approaches are legitimate and will yield the same answer. Uh, let's start with the one on the bottom. I'm going to solve uh, the expression in the parentheses first. So I'm going to copy my two-thirds minus, and I am going to find that I have the sum of 10 24ths. All right, so we can now find our common denominator here as well. Now we know that uh, two-thirds can be ch changed to twenty-fourths by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by eight. So we're going to have two-thirds times eight times
times 8, minus 10 twenty-fourths. I end up with 16 twenty-fourths minus 10 twenty-fourths equals 6 twenty-fourths. Both the numerator and the denominator are divisible by 6, and although I'm not going to require you to simplify in the test if we want to, we can. And 6 divided by 6 is 1, and 24 divided by 6 is 4. If we look at the next, the other way of doing it, we could simply go from left to right. So I'm going to bracket these to clarify. And I can find my common unit, which would be 12. I have 8 twelfths minus 3 twelfths minus 1 sixth. That's 5 twelfths minus 1 sixth. I can make 6 into twelfths by multiplying both the numerator and the denominator by 2. Could also use those models if I like. So I end up with 5 twelfths minus 2 twelfths equals 3 twelfths. Both the numerator and the denominator are divisible by 3 and I end up with 1 fourth. The last problem is the most challenging and this is where modeling becomes very important. Let's read it and let's set up a model. Roberto made a juice mix. He used 1 fourth gallons less cranberry juice than orange juice. He used one half gallons more orange juice than grapefruit juice. If he used one third gallons of cranberry juice, how much grapefruit juice did he use? Well, the only thing we know for sure is the last thing here, and that's what makes this one a little bit uh, tricky. We know that he used precisely one third gallons of cranberry juice. So even though that is the last part of our word problem, we are going to start with that. So we have cranberry juice, and that equals one-third. Where else do we see cranberry juice? Well, again, a little tricky. We see it here in this first sentence. He used one-fourth gallons less cranberry juice than orange juice. So which did he use more of, cranberry juice or orange juice? Well, since we use less cranberry juice, we have more orange juice. So we're going to start with our orange juice. And we're going to go back to our one-third for cranberry juice. And we know that he used one-fourth of a gallon more. Because one-fourth more is the same as one-fourth less cranberry juice. So we're going to now put one-fourth in again. This shows one-fourth less cranberry juice than orange juice. Let's look at the next sentence. If he used, he used one-half one gallons more orange juice than grapefruit juice. So what do we have more of? We have more orange juice. So we now have our grapefruit juice. We'll represent that with a G. Okay, so we have our orange juice amount. I'm just going to put OJ there. And whatever the orange juice is, we had more orange juice. We had one half. So the question mark here is for how much was the grapefruit juice? Okay, how are we going to calculate this now? Well, we need to find the orange juice to answer that. And then we need to subtract one half from the amount of orange juice to get the amount of grapefruit juice. So let's find out how much orange juice. Looking at that diagram, that shows me that I need to find the sum of one third and one fourth. With the sum of one third and one fourth, we find our common denominator, it's 12. And we have four twelfths and three twelfths, representing one third and one fourth respectively. I find the sum of those, and I get seven twelfths. 
Okay, now we have seven twelfths for the orange juice. So we can now say that this is seven twelfths. We're going to take seven twelfths and subtract one half. So seven twelfths minus one half. Um, we can use a number of strategies to find our like units. We could uh, use 20 fourths because 12 times 2 is 24. And we can use our model to determine that if you'd like. Well, there's, other, there's other approaches as well. So 7 twelfths is 14 20 fourths. And 1 half is 12 20 fourths. We subtract and we get 2 20 fourths. That answer is acceptable, but we can simplify it because both the numerator and the denominator are even. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 24 divided by 2 is 12. So the answer is 1 12. Hope this helps you. Uh, these problems are very similar to those that you'll see on your assessment. Again, uh, hopefully you have downloaded or been given the practice set and the homework to help prepare you for your mid-module 3 assessment.